This is defending the Immaculate. Together, we defend the honor of our Blessed Mother. The Virgin Mary, as compared with Saint John the Baptist, why would this make her immaculate, free from sin, from the first moment of her conception and her entire life? Why do we learn that Mary is immaculate by comparing her with Saint John the Baptist? We know throughout scripture that God provides the grace is necessary to fulfill the task given. We know that because God isn't cruel. If he asks you to do something, he gives you the grace in order to complete the task. Saint John the Baptist, for his mission, was given the special grace of sanctification in the womb. That's prophesied to Zachariah, his father, that he will be sanctified even in his mother's womb. And then we see that sanctification happening at Our Lady's voice. She works as a mediatrix, Our Lord's grace being mediated through her, bringing about his sanctification. And yet in spite of this holiness that was brought about while he was only six months old, in spite of his holiness, he denied even being worthy to touch Our Lord's sandals. Our Lady's role and task is clearly greater in dignity than St. John. Point number one. Point number two. Her proximity to Christ is far nearer than touching his sandals. If St. John the Baptist and other prophets, as we read in the scripture, were filled with the Holy Spirit in the womb, Our Lady should be expected to have this to a far greater degree considering her higher dignity and vocation and her closer proximity. Let's see the scriptures. I've alluded to some of them already. Let's see some of the scriptures that provide the evidence for this. Jeremiah, the prophet Jeremiah, who it seems hard, in fact, to convict to convict this man of sin in many ways. He lived a very holy life, but we don't believe, we don't know that he was sinless, but he was certainly very holy. And so Almighty God tells him, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I consecrated you. I appointed you a prophet to the nations. Foreshadowing, foreshadowing here, of course, St. John the Baptist, the greatest of all prophets. If Jeremiah is consecrated in the womb to be a prophet to the nations, what of Our Lady, who is to be the mother of the Saviour, the mother of the King of the nations, the one who bears the King into the world? As I mentioned, Zachariah is told he will be filled with the Holy Spirit even from his mother's womb. That said of St. John the Baptist, what would have been said of Our Lady? had we been privy to any announcement that was made to her mother, Saint Anne, if there was such an announcement, and which Catholic tradition says occurred, and many of the saints tell us, Saint Anne was told that the child that we would be born of her would be free from sin from the first moment of her conception. Saint Mark's Holy Gospel has Saint John the Baptist saying loudly, after me comes he who is mightier than I, the throng of whose sandals I am not worthy to stoop down and untie. But then we look at Our Lady. She gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. Her proximity to Almighty God St. John the Baptist, the greatest of all prophets, says that he was unworthy. The holiest of all prophets says he was unworthy. The one sanctified in the womb. 
and likely who never committed a sin. He was nonetheless conceived in sin and had spent six months under that curse, that stain of original sin. What would be the holiness, the sanctification that would be given to the one who will hold him and place him in the manger and hold him to her breast? She is the Immaculate. May the Immaculate Virgin Mary intercede for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.